Good evening. We will begin our presentation momentarily. Just a quick housekeeping. We do have interpretation services available in Spanish, Amharic, and Arabic. Buenas tardes a todos. Uh, buenas tardes. Bienvenidos a esta reunión. Um, tenemos intérpretes para todos los lenguajes: Amharico, Árabe y Español. Yo soy María López. Voy a ser su intérprete al español. And I still in and it's a machachu and quantum amatachu and I took my good blood in a carvalem, the Spanish in ya, Bamarina Navarovina, and I am Marina Turgumblem Felugu, a cascarinachu catash book cool. Yeah, Alam Lul, Lula, Zalaba Machan, Amarna Milo Membrat Chalachu, cell form and amen lamenta camu dogmo, the cascarinachu back any back any book will calai, so snat of our child Luzalaba Machan. Thank you. وإذا كنتوا عم تختار تحضرونا من ال 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 الكمبيوتر الرجاء تضغطوا على إشارة الكرة الأرضية لتختار اللغة المناسبة وهي اللغة العربية في هذه الحالة شكرا لكم. Dr. Hutchins, I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much. And first off, welcome again. Welcome back. I hope that you all had an opportunity to listen um, to some of the community uh, the community chat that was happening in regards to our concepts and got to see some of the polling that occurred as well. Um, today, we're going to be able to talk a little more in depth around um, the concepts as well as some of the uh, key takeaways that you got from the actual community meeting. And we will continue to do this um, each, each time. I know we're also gonna be talking about scheduling future meetings and the, the best time to have those future meetings. Maybe it won't be seven o'clock. I don't know. Maybe you all would say maybe not seven. I would love to hear that from you all. <laughs> Um, but I, I, I think that um, it's it's important for us to you know uh, have some insight and input from you all on what's going to work best um, in in our schedules. But I just wanted to welcome welcome you all again uh, this evening, and I'm looking forward uh, just to hearing some of the discussion in regards to our, con our concepts that we're going to be sharing uh, publicly with the board uh, this Thursday. I'm going to turn things over to uh, Ms. Gulick. Thank you, Dr. Hutchings. Thank you all for joining us again. We're super excited to talk to you tonight. Um, as Dr. Hutchings mentioned, we hope, and I, I saw most of you in the uh, attendee list, so thank you for joining the community meeting beforehand uh, so that you could participate in that and see um, what, what other community members are thinking. We also sent you some documents yesterday. Um, the school board presentation was already posted with the concept, so we wanna make sure you had them in advance uh, so that you could take a look and start to gather your comments. Um, so with that, tonight's presentation is very short because we're really hoping to hear from you all. Um, so we're not gonna go through detailed explanation of each of the concepts. We're really hoping um, we all, you all can jump right in uh, and we'll have an opportunity to kind of discuss uh, these three concepts and get your initial reaction. So um, tonight's only goal is to understand and provide, um, and for you all to understand and provide feedback on the three design concepts. Um, and so with that, I will go ahead and turn it right over to Omar uh, with Perkins Easton yeah. to start just talking through the concepts. Hi, good evening. And so I, uh, I, I did recognize some of your names as, as being present at the previous meeting. So I'll uh, forgive me if I repeat too many things. I'll try not to, uh, since you heard uh, a little bit about the explanation of, of the conception of each of the ideas. But, uh, you know, I think at the end of the day, we're trying to create a high performance learning environment for the students. So all of these three concepts uh, are, can be understood through that lens. And, you know, sustainability is, is a way forward uh, in that regard. You know, the achieving that high uh, performance learning environment and building placement and orientation 
plays a crucial role. And so that's why the classroom wings are oriented in the way that they are oriented. And that's not something that changes very much from concept to concept. We still have classrooms that are facing north and south because we're trying to get access to that daylight uh, and, and use it uh, to the building's best possible advantage. We're also trying to balance the footprint of the building as it relates to the outdoor spaces and the public open space and trying to minimize the footprint so we can do more with the site. So that actually uh, suggests certain choices we have available to us, like stacking various concepts in various uh, spaces on top of one another, like the gymnasium over the pool. Those are big, big volumes. And if we can condense their footprint, we can do more with the site. Uh, the idea of going to four stories, which, you know, for, for an elementary school, maybe that's not appropriate, but, you know, a high schooler, someone that's going to go to college, you know, next year, you know, they can, they can, uh, they can negotiate that, that vertical uh, uh, campus, you know, idea. So, so, uh, and, you know, we can do more with the site as a result. Uh, but also you know, looking to the future, making sure that there's some room available for expanding the school in the future. And that's so a concept that emerges on, on all three, right? And so we try to try to look at the site through, through that lens. I think that the question of parking on grade uh, imposes yet another thing that needs to coexist uh, in the site with everything else. And so the parking takes a, a, a big, big area. And so uh, as we do that, we want to make sure that we also don't forget about making it safe for the students and the pedestrians that may be walking in and around the facility. So we, we are looking at uh, all of these things very carefully. Uh, other mobility uh, uh, access questions were raised at the previous meeting, which I, I thought they were important, an important reminder that we need to also look at the site through that lens, making sure that you know, we can bike to it, we can walk to it, we can take the bus to it um, as equally important methods of mobility. Um, this is the second concept, which is the crescent, and it, it shows the idea of putting more classrooms on the south side of the building. So the appearance of the building, it's going to be from Braddock, it's going to be dominated by you know, the presence of, of classrooms, uh, classroom wing there. The library, it's a kind of a formal feature on the east side, which has that kind of gateway. I call that a gateway quality um, as it hovers there over the courtyard space. Um, and then this one, because of the size of the footprint, begins to deal with parking a little bit differently. We have less available on the east, so we put more of it on the west side in a place that perhaps sits in between the building and the fields, right? And so that's kind of a unique feature uh, of this particular concept here. Can show the third one maybe. Uh, the pinwheel concept, which uh, in our minds has the potential for being the most compact and um, the most aggressive in terms of how tight it, it keeps all of the components to the building so that we can, again, do more with the site. And we look at the bus loop in a slightly different configuration that uh, works well for the buses. And we review this with uh, the transportation uh, directors there uh, with the district. Um, uh, and uh, But also safety, right? Making sure that those students are coming and going from the bus, accessing that service in a safe manner. And then not forgetting about the public open space and making sure that all of the programming things that um, we need to observe uh, are present there in the design. So here they are, all three uh, kind of stacked up in comparison. And it was interesting to see the feedback from the community in terms of um, you know, what resonated with them. And it, it seemed that all three concepts got a lot of likes, uh, which, is, which is good. Um, it, it makes it a little bit um, a little bit harder, I guess, for the design team to discern through that, but I think that's a good position to be in, uh, in my mind. So with that, um, we do want to kind of um, get the initial feedback uh, from our uh, uh, 
advisory team members, if you could um, use the raise hand feature, um, I'll um, start calling names and uh, get your questions or feedbacks. Tom Fulton has his hand rate in Vivian Ramirez. Yes, uh, Tom Fulton, uh, representing Seminary Hill Association. Uh, my question is for the school. I'm, I'm still a little confused about the safety aspect of moving students from the main campus to this campus through Dysfunction Junction. I understand the focus on safety by the architects within the campus, but I'm unsure how the school will protect students transferring between campuses. That's a good question. I can touch on it. Um, and then if anybody else wants to speak to the programming. So I would say currently we have students who go between the campuses. We have students that are currently at Minnie Howard um, that go to the King Street campus uh, in, well, not currently because we're in, we're in COVID times, but go to King Street campus in the afternoon for additional courses. Um, so that is, that transfer is something that we, we've been dealing with and living through. Um, we have talked about uh, some pedestrian improvements to if students do choose to walk from one to the other to improve that experience um, with the city. But then also our, our program uh, team is our educational program team is not thinking that these students will change classes every period. It may be for one whole day they're at one uh, school or it may be for half the day until um, their lunch period, they're at one school. Um, and so the way they're thinking through it and they'll continue to think through um, the educational programming is to consider keeping students at one place for extended uh, periods of time so they don't have to continually do this transition. transition. Um, Perkins Eastman, I don't know if Sean or, or anybody else, if you wanna to speak to uh, just some of the conversations we've had with the educational design team on this. I think, Erica, you touched on exactly what I was thinking uh, in response that, you know, again, where it's not as though every block, you know, there's a, a transfer across campuses, you know, that, you know, we're, we've been talking very much about, you know, half day programming or, you know, uh, as uh, Erica was saying, you know, a more extended time frame so that, you know, one, we're not you know, generating a large transportation demand, you know, between the two campuses. But certainly safety is uh, on the forefront of uh, everybody's mind as, as we go forward through this. And we're trying to uh, you know, think through the reception on this campus you know, and facilitating that access as they arrive onto the Mini Howard campus. And we're also going to look at what some of the EDT has been talking about looking at um, the scheduling of classes and what that looks like. I mean, that really will have an impact. I think a lot of people gravitate towards the traditional scheduling um, that, that people are just accustomed to having in schools, but we really are trying to envision um, a different way in how we schedule um, our students um, move, moving, moving forward. Uh, we also wanted to look at ways where students may be at one particular campus on a particular day and at the um, other campus on another day uh, so that they're not necessarily going back and forth all day long, um, like after, after each period or having a half a day in one building, half a day in another building and having some type of um, service between the two, the two campuses. But we still wanted to offer, um, some students may choose to, to bike or walk, um, which we wanna be able to, to do that uh, as, as well, like some of our students are doing are doing now, um, uh, just, you know, they walk to school as well as from school um, down that street uh, as, as well. But those are some of the things, Tom, that, you know, to give you some insight as to what discussions the educational design team has been having about the traffic and the, um, the, the walkability for students. Uh, Dr. Hutchings, just a quick, uh, the previous meeting talked about the DASH connection the Dash bus stop for Minnie Howard is located at the corner of North Early Street and Braddock. So the AT5 makes a right hand or left hand turn, depending on direction, at North Early Street, and students walk from that corner down to Minnie Howard. So if the school is moved to the um, east portion of the campus, 
um, it might actually be closer for those students taking the dash to just walk through the uh, Bradley Shopping Center and catch the bus in front of the uh, McDonald's. Yeah, and that and that's very true. And there also uh, it may be a new stop that we create, you know, because of because of this as well. Um, one thing that we do uh, work with with the, with Dash is um, each year we have discussions around bus stops and uh, you know pot uh, potentially adding different stops. Um, I know we did that when we really did a push for high school students to ride the buses. Um, there were several stops that were added because of that and different routes that were done. Um, so those are those are conversations that we will need to have um, with Dash and we could potentially have, you know, a totally new stop that current that doesn't currently exist um, with this with this new uh, structure and that's whichever whichever concept that we choose. Hello. And Dr. Hutchings, just to add on to your scheduling comment, um, as part of the um, kind of working with the scheduling consultant, we are looking to extend the transitions between the classes, and that will help with the, some of the um, transitions between the campuses. Um, and um, Amima had a same question about how the students will be transported uh, between the schools, and I think we just touched on that um, question as we answered the uh, previous question. Uh, Vivian Ramirez, would you like to go next? Here we go. Um, so uh, the only question I had regarding the presentation here, so it seems like a couple of the schemes provide the parking lot that intersects in between the athletic fields and the school. Was there any consideration having a parking lot on the west side of the campus? Meaning all, all the way on the west side? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting question. Uh, yes, I think there was one of our team members that uh, thought about that. And uh, uh, it, it's a possibility. I mean, I think, I think that um, the parking being so far away from the school was was a concern, um, you know, perhaps, you know, for the teachers that are maybe parking there. Uh, the other uh, was uh, on the flexibility of the open space. Um, so right now that th there's there's a somewhat of a neat partition, if you will, between the school site and the public open space site, uh, which is that vertical line that's being struck there. Uh, and so we, if we placed the parking on the west side, then it would have to, we would have to be, um, I guess, imaginative about how we then partition the public open space piece of the site. It, it's almost like you would have three zones, a mini little school zone for the parking, then public open space, and then, and then the school zone. And so that that complexity, I think, um, you know, those two items really moved us away from that thinking. But we did consider it. Uh, it's something that you know perhaps makes sense to rekindle, we can certainly talk about that again. I know in some of our preliminary discussions that we had uh, prior to the concepts being developed, um, we had discussions around having parking as well as the bus loop closer to Bradley, the Bradley Shopping Center area, because it is um, a traffic area already. And to have um, you know that kind of uh, adjacent to uh, the, you know the parking that's down in near Bradley or the street that's down in near Bradley, that that is that could potentially have a better traffic pattern. Um, I know that was just some of the preliminary comment, and that was before we had any concepts in place. It was just discussions that we were having um, in the early stages, and I'm I'm just making an assumption or an inference here that uh, maybe some of those discussions led to uh, many of our concepts being either in the middle in between the fields and the building or um, on the far east of, um, of, of the actual project or, um, or land. One other consideration that I'd offer, and, and we had some conversations with uh, the transportation group uh, on this is uh, the issue of accessibility from, you know, uh, you know both uh, 
faculty, visitors, uh, students, you know, that might uh, have mobility issues, you know, relative to its arriving into the building. So we're trying to, of course, uh, make it as convenient and easy as possible to, to use the facilities, uh, you know, by having proximate drop off and uh, parking spaces relative to the, the facilities within the building as well. That's true. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, I was when I was looking at this, I was just thought um, in terms of like the, the amount of kind of vehicular traffic and it kind of interrupts a um, any kind of like a, a, a daytime use, for example, of students going across the lot to um, the fields. So, so Vivian, following up on that, on that uh, line of thinking. So the, the concept at the top, the hand concept is one in which there's a loop, bus loop on the Southern side, but then you can see that the, the POS, public open space has the capacity of just touching the building, right? And so that, that provides for maximum connectivity um, between those spaces. And, and, and I should point out, I, I'm sorry, I, I should point out that um, um, the site, the concept for the site is not necessarily attached to the concept for the building. In other words, you could like the site idea of one concept, but like the building of another concept, and we can actually work to, to meld the two together. So they're not exclusive. Taylor Frazier and Omeima Kidir have their hands up. Taylor? Yes, hi. Oh, um, Omeima, okay. Yeah, yes, hi, how are you guys? Um, good hi. evening. Um, I just touch base on the traffic part. Um, I mean, it, it, the situation, the existing situation is when uh, drop off and pick up, they'll always have uh, almost one lane that is closed only for cars waiting to, for their uh, students. So, um, I, if I if I'm reading the the plans or the site, it, the pick up and drop off in the first and second. The second is all the way towards the back. I mean the top of the page, or how will we work uh, for drop off and pick up students, and how will that affect the the traffic in uh, Main Street with Braddock? Um, the other thing is um, usually when there is like conferences, there's events, there's a lot of uh, cars parked, so we have problems with parking. So um, considering it's that there's enough parking in the, the site that will accommodate, I mean, parents and teachers and students if they're driving, I don't know at that point. Um, when there's events there, usually the staff is there, the parents are coming and they're, um, I mean, maybe students' cars as well. Um, is, I don't know how, how uh, will that affect uh, the spaces that we have. Um, I think the first concept, although in the top, I think the parking is less than the other two. And um, the last one, I think is, I, I don't know if I'm not seeing numbers, but I'm just thinking if there is enough parking. Um, and, and, and also just cross, the students crossing the parking lot and crossing the street. Uh, we're gonna think about like a pedestrian bridge for them to cross Braddock to get to the other end and maybe walk through to TC. Was that something maybe in mind? Um, I mean, because they some of them cross the street to get to the other side of Braddock to go straight to TC. If there's any uh, idea of having like a pedestrian bridge crossing on top of Braddock Will that make it any easier? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So I can maybe try to answer some of those questions. And I and I heard three. Uh, the first one having to do with vehicular drop off, and I, I I'm I'm assuming you're talking about cars. Um, and uh, yeah. so yeah, so so all of the all of the concepts address that uh, to some degree, and uh, you can see in the first one at the top, there's a little loop. Uh, that's uh, next to the courtyard there that's meant to, uh, yes, thank you, Medea, uh, that meant to uh, have, provide queuing space for cars. Now you can imagine in the afternoon when the car is just sitting there idle waiting for the student, the idea is to actually have uh, 
from from where the the cursor is now vertically on the page and then wrapping around the back of the building so we develop all of that length so that you can you can ha have a single file sort of parking loop around around there and into the front of of the loop there and and we do that so that it exists within the site boundaries right so that that queuing lane is not spilling out onto the street and so that's that's what we need to watch out for that if we do provide for that loop access that we operationalize it within the site and it doesn't spill out uh, out of bounds. Um, we also developed a similar idea on the second one where you see that big sort of long boulevard that ends in that turnaround circle, right? And that's the purpose of that, to provide all that length for, for the queuing of cars. And then we, we have a similar approach in the third one. So that's, that's the idea there. I, I will say that in showing this to uh, the transportation uh, director, uh, the middle concept uh, gave him a little bit of heartburn because uh, we were, were suggesting in this concept that the bus loop entrance and the parking lot entrance are being shared through a same curb cut. And uh, he really was uh, uh, advocating to us to to think of other ways uh, in which we can separate, you know, those two forms of, of mobility. So that's the first question. The second question uh, had to do with, hmm, I remember the third one. What was the second one again? Or maybe if you can remind me. It, it still still the with parking is so oh, yeah, the amount gets, of parking. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so with this one, okay, so we, we have a saying in the office, you know, let me see if I can get it right. You know, we, we don't design buildings for Super Bowl Sunday, because otherwise you would be designing for, the whole thing would be parking. And, and most of the year would be sitting there empty, right? So we need to try to optimize, find that sweet spot that we can uh, service the building adequately, and, uh, but also not overbuild the parking. So right now, um, as we understand the regulations, is we need, for the amount of school that we're building, we need 160 spaces. Now, we're trying to build an additional 40, which would be equal to the amount required if you were to build an addition on the building at a future date. So that's a good way to future-proof the site, is to perhaps build up the parking a little bit more than what you need presently so that in the future you have the flexibility to add on to and not have to worry as much uh, about parking. Now, it, it so happens that the addition locations here and the parking share the same space, right? Because we, we don't have a lot of site. So I think that there's still a little bit of a, 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 uh, an engagement that needs to happen between in the future addition and the parking, but I think that that can be solved. But that's, that's the strategy there. Uh, and, and I think that, um, you know, uh, as an architect, all things being equal, you know, we, we would hope for a future where we didn't have to rely as much on the car. I know that it's, 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 it's kind of a wish and aspirational goal, uh, but really recognizing all the other mobility uh, um, opportunities that are present on the site, we need to also cultivate those and make sure that uh, they're, they're uh, easy to, to use and, and access. And then the third one about the bridge, and I, I think at the root of your question is, is the safety of students walking to the school, which is very much in our minds. And um, one thing that, um, that we would like to think about as we develop the design is that little segment of sidewalk between Bradley Shopping Center, the corner there on the lower right-hand corner, yeah, and the first curb cut that you see, that, that little segment of sidewalk, yeah, right there, that's a very, very important segment of sidewalk for us. And we wanna make sure that that segment is the most beautiful, most pedestrian-friendly segment anywhere in the world, right? We need to make it very wide and gracious and, and uh, the separation between the pedestrian and the car needs to be at the highest form that we can possibly get in that stretch. Um, 
because that's the first point of engagement from the site to the east, right? As students may or may not be walking from that direction, that's the first point of engagement. So we want to make sure that from that corner to the front door of the building is as pedestrian focused as we can get it. So what are we doing? We would like to build a little bit, you can see a little bit of green space there now being moved in the plans. We would like to amplify that, make that even a little bit wider than we're showing. Uh, a complexity about the site here is that the parking is at a higher elevation than the sidewalk. So you already have a vertical difference between where people are and cars are, and that's helpful because it helps us also screen the, the parking area from view and, and allows us to do some beautification things that uh, are just gonna make that walk a little more pleasant. So landscaping and, and screening and, and the like. Uh, so that we, we, we do rather than thinking about a bridge because the, the cost of building a bridge across Braddock, I, I don't even wanna even guess what that would be like, but uh, uh, it would be, it would be, uh, I think, a budget breaker, I think. I think we would spend all the money we have on, on the bridge. I think too, Omar, if I could jump in on this point and then we'll get to Taylor, I promise. Um, so in general, you know, a bridge over road, you don't wanna necessarily build, build the place for cars and not for the walkers. You know, it just encourages the cars to be less safe um, and so keeping the pedestrians at grade, we've talked about this with the city too, keeping the pedestrians at the same grade just encourages it to be a safe environment all around. I would say too, um, related to some of your questions and just thinking about the existing Mini Howard, because I know that's kind of every, where everyone's context is coming from. The existing Mini Howard, I believe our student, our, our parents related to your vehicle drop off are pulling up along the street. Um, and so if you imagine taking that whole line off the street and into the parking lot, it's gonna be significantly improved. Um, and then related just by bringing the building, if you think about where those, uh, where the tennis courts are pretty much shown on all of these um, sites, that's basically where Mini Howard's front door is right now. And so just pulling the, the front door of the school all the way to the east is gonna significantly improve that pedestrian experience for our students. Um, we also can utilize then, because I've been at Mini Howard and seen the terrifying drop off when a parent is driving, you know, east on Braddock Road and just lets their kid get out and run across the street. Um, the, we will be able to create um, the, the walk, the crosswalk at the light at, I think it's Marley Way or whatever that road is on the east, the other side, Medea, east side of the site. Um, and then with the, with the building being so close to that side, students and pedestrians won't be as obligated to run across the street at the middle of the site. And so it just will make it a much more uh, safe environment. Um, but I do wanna get to, I think those are a lot of good questions. It's helpful to just talk through and hear uh, your concerns. Um, I think Taylor, you had your hand up. You wanna go next? And Eric, after Taylor, if we could um, have Oscar Gonzalez go, he can't um, raise his hand. Um, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Hi, yes. So being, oh, sorry, being um, a student and a student athlete, I was just addressing the, specifically in the hand model, the basketball court. I know that it's kind of like far away from the campus. And I was just wondering if there was like some possible way that we could just like move it a little bit closer because it just seems very far. And um, I know that students, especially like athletes can be very tired walking back and forth between campuses. So I was just wondering if there was a way that we could move the basketball court closer to campus. Are you our star basketball player? Um, no, I'm a track runner, but a lot okay. of my friends. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Well, thank you for being here. I appreciate you uh, raising up your hand and, and, and voicing your concern. When the students talk, we listen. So uh, make sure that uh, you, you share with uh, your friends what you've learned here today and, and bring back their feedback as well. Uh, so yes, I think that that's something we can consider, uh, strongly consider. And in fact, I can see how we can do that very easily on the first concept at the top, the hand concept. Um, and uh, 
you know, there could there's ample room there for, for both. And, uh, you know, we can actually build enough landscaping around these zones so that those two separate uh, um, uh, athletic um, uses can have some degree of separation and, and privacy, if you will, to the extent that something wants to be private in a public space. I don't know, but uh, um, enough separation there so that those two uses can, can uh, act independently. Uh, it's a little bit harder on the second concept with all the parking in the way. So, so if we could get rid of some parking, we certainly could could do it there as well. Um, it becomes a little bit harder on the last one at the bottom. And so there I, I ask for your, your flexibility and, and perhaps uh, understanding that maybe it's okay to have the basketball court be part of the complex of outdoor athletic spaces on the West. And and you know, happily coexist with some of the other uses there. But thank you, Taylor, for that question. And uh, we're gonna go to Oscar Gonzalez, is that right? Yep, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi there, um, I just a couple of things. Uh, the whole mobility issue with respect to, for example, ADA access, I mean, I'm assuming that's a given that you'll, you'll treat that as it needs to be. Uh, literally front door access. But I, and this is a couple of things I mentioned in the last, uh, in the community meeting in terms of uh, vision zero and complete street policies that the city has, that I think, you know, the, the safety of folks, of the kids and faculty and others that are coming to the campus that, you know, either, either walking, biking, or taking the bus, uh, you know, making that uh, bus connection more of a front door activity. I think those are, uh, things to really think about and think hard. Uh, and I think particularly the, the pedestrian safety here uh, when Ms. Gallick mentioned uh, parents dropping off kids and then having them dash across the street, that's not a good thing. So if whatever you can do to keep that top of mind to, to design in a way that doesn't encourage that. And I think just you know, the whole issue of you know, dangers by design, yeah, I think given what you're doing here, I think you want to avoid uh, or minimize it to, to the greatest extent possible. Yeah, thank you, Oscar, for uh, and I appreciate you reminding us of those um, uh, those initiatives by the city. I think uh, we need to we need to make sure that uh, we examine them and and fold that thinking into into the design here. But we appreciate the comments, and we are very much in agreement uh, on all those points. And Linda, would you like to go next? Yes. Sure, thank you. Um, keeping with this, this theme of parking, um, I agree that, that I think it's a, a better idea to have the fields closer to the building, but I, I do agree with the suggestion that, that the majority of parking, if, if possible, sort of from the Crescent design, be moved to the other side of the field. I think leaving, somewhere accessible parking close to the building as necessary, but I think teachers can walk the length of a, a soccer field for the most part, but I think that brings parking away from the building and closer to um, the common use fields for people who are using it, you know, after hours or on the weekends. When you, when you look at the pinwheel concept, you know, there, there's hardly any parking for where are all those people coming from and walking and you know, are they all parking in Bradley and, and at the east, the east side of the building and walking all the way down to the, um, to the tennis court? You know, I just, I think that, you know, if we don't want students walking across the field, then, then why do we want, you know, all these parents, all these younger kids, potentially all these, you know, sports events. Um, I think it'd be a good idea to have the parking more accessible to the field for them which we don't see mm -hmm. in concepts one, uh, the, the hand or the pinwheel. Right, right, okay. I would okay. just say too, uh, for a lot of the events you're kind of referencing, um, and, and we're, do we're doing this at MacArthur, we'll probably continue to do this at other sites, but the bus loop can be double striped. So, uh, and I think you make good points, but the bus loop, when we're not busing kids on the weekends, when we don't have to use that space for bus parking, it'll be, it could be striped for vehicle parking so that that basically becomes an additional parking lot at any of those times outside of pickup and drop off for us. 
um, it's just just so people can start to visualize it a little bit. But good point um, about the parking maybe in the crescent concept being close to the building, but close to the fields, um, maybe a little more preferable. And that's what we are showing, Erica, in the bus loops. I think we're showing close to 40 spaces as far as car parking uh, as a double use. And that helps us with some of our green initiatives and um, reducing some of the kind of asphalt and non impervious um, uh, surfaces. Other comments? Anything people want to point out that they like or don't like? Tom, Tom has his hand raised. Yeah. Well, th this is a question for the school. Uh, would be would the field be lighted? Um, the neighbors um, are very concerned about uh, how lighting is going in at the high school, and there are a lot of questions about whether or not the field will be lit nights and weekends. Yes, yeah, so there are lights existing at the mini Howard campus, so we are intending to put them in um, for this. Well, the, the, the difference is, of course, that currently the lights are down at Bradley, which is a commercial establishment, but with reversing the property, the lights will be in the neighborhood. Right. Yeah, and I think we talked about, and you could see um, Perkins Eastern starting to show some of this, but just making sure that there is a buffer that we're moving the field as far away from that property line as we possibly can. Um, I don't know, Jack, are you on? Do you wanna say anything? Yeah, no, I'm here. Um, Jack Brown again with the Department of Recreation. I mean, yeah, again, our baseline assumption here was that we would, would return the um, space to the existing uses. Um, you know, we're not unaware that moving the lights from one side to the other is potentially impactful, but this is a highly used, um, facility, not only for ACPS, but for the community as well. And, you know, maximizing the, the use and keeping the existing um, amenities is, is, a, is of high importance. Exactly. Also, the tennis courts are highly used at this location currently, and, and we would expect that to be um, lit as well as it currently is today. Thanks for bringing that up, Tom. I'm honestly surprised we made it, what, 43 minutes into our meeting tonight <laughs> and all of the community yeah. meeting without talking about lights. So um, it's good to talk about because we do know that's certainly a concern the neighbors have brought up um, before. And Erica, um, Oscar also said that consider reducing, minimizing total car parking requirements. Um, he can't raise his hand, so um, he's been sending um, through the message. Um, I don't know if you wanted to make additional comments to that or. No, I mean, just the point that if you provide more parking, you will have more parking demand. So if you can manage or minimize that to the extent you can, I mean, I know there's some realities in terms of what the school needs, but if you just keep that in mind as uh, that's just something to be helpful. I mean, it, it would support other city policies in terms of what the city is trying to do in minimizing uh, auto, auto travel. Thank you. And Amima, I think you had your hand next. Yeah, um, I just, I've been hearing one uh, talking about the masses and how um, the, I mean, the three options, uh, how will the massing, like how high will the uh, building will be? I mean, uh, will all be, like same height would be different. Um, it's like uh, the first one is m not very symmetrical, but kind of um, just looking at the second one with the library, I think in the front, I just like that more, but I'm just, this is my personal, I just I wanted to know about the masses and how will that uh, affect, like how many, would they use elevators? We're gonna be used stairs, uh, is it, um, I mean, definitely, I'm sure they're going to be ADA uh, accessibility for everyone with ramps and stuff like that. I just want to see if there's possibly just to touch base on the building's height and uh, mm -hmm. how many floors and stuff like that. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good question. Thank you for asking that. So the uh, the first concept is four stories, and uh, it's four stories. But we also remember that because we have this change in the terrain, where it's roughly about 20, 22 feet uh, around the center of the site, by nestling the building into that, you have a building that's four levels on one side, on the east side facing Bradley, the Bradley Shopping Center, but it's really three levels on the west side facing the fields. And that's more or less a constant on all three concepts uh, because that's how the topography works on the site. On the second concept, the four-story piece is along Braddock Road uh, facing south. And then the building drops down to uh, three around the center, uh, center of the building. The bottom concept is four levels, like I said before, and three on the west side facing the fields, but it does have a wing that is five floors. And that's actually, uh, one of the reasons why this particular concept is more compact than the others is that we're adding just a partial uh, fifth floor. And you can see the massing there, how that, that volume to the right-hand side, Medea, if you can point to the massing on the pinwheel, the, the yeah, uh, to the right, to the right. Yeah, that one, yes, <laughs> thank you. That piece and that piece alone is five levels. So it's not something that happens over the whole building. It's really just that wing. And, and look where that wing is on the site. It's more or less in the geographic center of the property. So it's not too close to Braddock. It's not, close, not too close to the neighbors to the north. It's more or less in the center of the site, which in my mind, from a height point of view, is, is the best place to, to put something that has maybe a little more height and therefore less impact uh, in the surroundings. So that's the difference between the three. Um, and you know, the higher you go, the more compact you can make the footprint, but there's, there's limits to that as well. Hopefully that answers your question. Sorry. Some of the, um, if you look in some of the, not in this presentation, but in the other, um, uh, slide deck there is you'll see kind of a, a sec what we call section but it, it shows you the the topography and the building because you'll also see for those of you familiar with the mini Howard site you know where the building is now is high and where the, where the fields are is low and so even though the building might be five stories when you look across the whole site it's not too much taller mm -hmm. um, than where the fields would be uh, just because of the topography in the way Mm -hmm. um, do we want to go to Carlton next? And then I wanted to, I don't see anybody else's hand raised. I know this was quick. I know you have a lot to digest. Um, so after Carlton, uh, we might just go ahead and wrap up. And then um, again, we have the survey out, the email out, and Azuka will go all over all of that. But Carlton, go ahead. Um, okay, so, so my first choice was going to be the hand concept. But just like Taylor said, the court does look like too far from the school building. So like, it'll be good, like probably under the tennis court or on the side of the field, like the top of it or something like that. But the pinwheel, is it a reason that um, the court is half, like a half court, not full? Yeah, yeah, good question. Uh, you know, it, there's a reason, it's probably not a very good reason and so I think that what we would try to do is make sure that it's a full court. Um, it, it seemed to us that uh, what we were designing here, the half court was uh, kind of fit in nicely, uh, but we can certainly, it, it's become important, an important issue out of this meeting and, and we hear you loud and clearly. Uh, and so we would be looking at ways in which we can expand that to be a full court. Thank you, Carlton. No. Uh, okay, so Azuka, maybe we could go through the rest of the slides. Yeah, Medea, could you um, turn over to 
uh, the budget analysis. Um, this is a quick um, um, update on the budget. Um, as I mentioned earlier during the community meeting, um, we are, uh, are uh, out of the total uh, high school project, uh, we have projected 150 million for the construction. Um, as we prioritize our educational programming spaces, the teaching and learning spaces, as well as the common areas and shared spaces such as gymnasium, they total up to $149.8 million. Um, on the kind of the right half of the table that you're seeing under orange, we're still evaluating some additional programs and uses such as aquatic pool, underground, uh, underground or structure parking, co-located partner uses such as Teen Wellness Center, Early Childhood uh, programs. Uh, they're currently included in the massing of the three designs. As we, as we do uh, further evaluations and look at uh, further uh, funding options, some of those uses may come out of the um, massing and uh, the overall uh, programs of our uh, concept designs. Uh, next slide, please. Near-term decisions, uh, we've gone through the co-location option and the comprehensive program and educational specifications decisions. Um, the uh, near-term decision that we're looking at is the uh, school board info session on the three concepts this Thursday on March 18th, and then decision on April 8th uh, meeting. Next slide, please. Um, our uh, engagement process, um, our next meeting is scheduled for March 25th. Um, we have already scheduled these meetings, so we're going to keep the time um, similar to what we have done today. And moving forward, starting in April, we'll definitely would like to get your feedback on better times um, and dates that are more appropriate for most of the team members to attend. Uh, so tentatively, we said April 12th, but uh, we may uh, potentially do maybe the community meeting on one day and then uh, do the advisory team meeting the next day just to kind of uh, start the meeting a little bit earlier. Um, so we'll um, engage you all on that um, based availability for that meeting moving forward. Next slide, please. Um, these are sort of uh, some, uh, some of the um, high level topics that we are anticipating during our next uh, few uh, meetings. Uh, in May, we'll, uh, we'll dive into the schematic design. We'll do some site updates. Um, in June, again, we'll continue through some of the schematic design and do updates in the cost and construction update. Um, in July, feedback on uh, schematic design. Um, we'll talk about some of the facades and materials potentially to be used for the project. In August and September, we'll um, update on submission to, uh, to be considered by Planning Commission and City Council, updates on design and site usage. Uh, in November and December, we'll provide final information to the community prior to the Planning Commission and City Council hearings on the DSUP process. And uh, during the winter of 2022, we'll um, get updates from the Planning Commission and City Council hearings and next steps for our project. And uh, we're, um, our goal is um, uh, for the advisory team to kind of take us through this DSUP process and um, get to the construction timeline, which is the early spring of 2022. Next slide, please. Um, here we have the, um, the comment form link and the QR code. If you all have any additional comments or if your constituents have any additional comments, uh, please have them to submit to this um, uh, comment form. We have it out, um, I think, until end, uh, Sunday through Sunday um, of this week. So please share this link and uh, code um, with your groups and community members. Our next meeting, as I mentioned, is on March 25th, and uh, you can always reach us at uh, the high school project email address. I think that kind of wraps up our presentation. All right, well, thank you all. Thanks for taking the time tonight. Um, as Azuka said, please share that survey link with your, uh, your groups that you represent. Um, and please also feel free to email that high school project email, even if you know you feel like you can't capture what you want to say about the um, 
the concepts in the comment form, feel free to send an email to us. That comes to the whole project team um, and we'll be happy uh, to review that. So thank you all, have a good night. Thank you, good night.